Hello, good morning. It's a wonderful Wednesday. My name is Denise Apomaiji and I have the utmost pleasure of serving you AM News. After days of intense public backlash and criticism, the people power has prevailed and a controversial ally which would have allowed MPs, ministers and judges to drive without speed limits and install sirens has been withdrawn by the government. The justification offered for the ally was that these public officials should not be caught in traffic in the performance of the official duties but a section of the public rejected the regulation as self-seeking there's more in this report the controversial legislative instrument that would have allowed members of parliament ministers to fix sirens on their cars and drive without speed limits would have matured into law on friday but the public has made their voice known and it appears the government has listened with less than three days for the ally to mature into law, it has been withdrawn on government's behalf by the local government minister, Martin Ejie Men Sakosa. I rise to move that the road traffic amendment regulation 2024, which was laid on the Friday, 14 June 2024, be withdrawn. Mr. Speaker, this has become necessary based on extensive engagement with leadership. It is so withdrawn, Mr. Speaker. Regulation 2024 is hereby redrawn. The minority now say a lot more allies that have been laid in the house, including that one that is seeking to regulate the prices of cement, must also now be withdrawn. According to Governor Kwame Agoja, that is also unpopular, and the people have spoken against it. I don't you think they, they, they... You knew this is not what we decided. It was, it was, it, it, the comment, I cannot repeat the comment that was made at concrete. So, Mr. Speaker, they have decided that an issue of national interest is not good looking on parliament, especially government, and they have decided to withdraw it. Mr. Speaker, we have no business uh, talking about it, but I can just remind them, there are other, other allies that have been laid that the public is still not happy about. I will encourage them to withdraw those ones as well. Mr. Speaker, while the Minister of Trade is here, the ally that he laid on cement is also not, the public is not happy. We also come and withdraw us as well. Come and withdraw the cement ally as well. Come and withdraw the cement ally as well. And uh, also, no speed limits. They, I mean, this social media thing, <laughs> there is nothing like that before Panama. There is nothing like that before Panama. And so I thought maybe something was being done behind my, my listen. So I started calling all over, and all my uh, uh, directors said, no, they have not seen anything like that. Um, I have the responsibility of admitting many of these things. Uh, sometimes they may elude me, but I haven't seen any sign here. That was false, because on the day that ally was laid, the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagwin himself, was in the chair as our checks now indicate. What proceedings from 14 June when Alban Bagway was presiding over the house when that ally was laid? So the Minister for Roads, uh, Minister for Transport is called upon to lay that instrument. Yes, please. Honorable the Speaker, they were consulting and we wanted to wait for them to come. And so, please, let the Majesty, please, let's engage him. I'm just told by the, the Chairman of the Committee that the concerns they raised have been uh, addressed so we can leave. We just hope, we just hope that it doesn't become another uh, controversy that, oh, we've laid it and public says who did it, we don't know about it. So, Mr. Speaker, once the chairman has confirmed that it's been addressed, we have no objection to, uh, to we, we can lay it. Show me the, the, the provisions that we, we, we ask to be inserted. So, Mr. Speaker, it can be, it can be laid. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, arise on order 64. Order what? 64. That we do not have the... Okay, we take note of all. We do not have... We do not have the... I have taken note of it. I know the contents. So, and I know the procedure. I wish you direct the bell is rang. <laughs> but that's what the, the standing order say. And I'm happy you have taken note. So if you could ask them to ring the bell. So... Yeah, the writing will be done. Mr. Yes, Speaker. Don't detail it for me, I know it. Okay. So, 
Mr. Speaker, it's one minute. You have my word. One minute past two. <laughs> yes, yeah, so please, can you uh, present the, the instrument? Uh, table office, can you do the writing? Let the bell be rang for 10 minutes. Road Traffic Amendment Regulations 2024. Honourable members, the Road Traffic Amendment Regulation 2024 is accordingly laid and referred to the Subsidiary Legislation Committee for consideration and report to the House. The Committee on Transport could, could support the Committee of Subsidiary Legislation with whatever material they have in order to enrich the report that will be submitted to the House. The public has now spoken in unison and government has listened. And the public says they will continue to make their voices heard whenever issues come up to Parliament and they are in opposition. It is now the responsibility and government and Parliament to listen to the people, to consult and make sure that the business they transact here on their behalf really sits in their interest. Reporting for Joy News, Kweku Asante, Parliament House, Accra. Now, let's stay a while in Parliament, where intense disagreement among NDC MPs was on full display over a controversial lithium mining agreement. Now, the minority had on two occasions blocked the laying of the agreement, but it was successfully laid by the government on Tuesday. But the minority side had their differences displayed. Listen to Minority Chief Whip Kwame Gavins Agboja urging the second Deputy Speaker not to refer the matter to the Mines and Energy Committee, a committee which had John Jinapo as ranking at the time. Concerns about mining in forests on water bodies and other things just because they want it to be passed. Mr. Speaker, there's nothing in our standing order today that will stop us from allowing them to lay. But be assured, you will not be allowed to cajole anybody to lay a lithium agreement to, for anyone to go and mine in a reserve forest. Even if you, if it, even if you give a 10 trillion, we don't care. You will do, you will be forced to do the right thing and make sure the environment is protected, not for you and I only, but for the future generations yet unborn. So we are not going to uh, stand in your way of laying it, but the committee that this will be referred to. And Mr. Speaker, we are just about to uh, uh, approve the new committees under the new standing order. People have been attempting for this to be referred to a joint committee. Today, we are encouraging you to refer this to the only the Committee of Lands. Yes, and natural resources. This idea, yes, 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 because this idea of this, this idea of this joint committee creates a problem. This is mining has nothing to do with mining has nothing to do with energy. Mining is a land and natural resource matter. So 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 Mr. Speaker, so Mr. Speaker. We were hoping that we will complete the setting up of the committees today before we make the referral. Those who are pushing for this to be laid ahead of time should know this will not be referred to Mines and Energy and Lands Committee. It must necessarily go to the Lands and Natural Resource Committee only. And we shall follow up to make sure that the right thing is done for this country. No one is allowed to mine and then, and then when we do this and then the people are crying in their communities, the parliament absorbs itself. It is our responsibility to approve the agreement and do the oversight of this, Mr. Speaker. Those are the only things I have to say because, uh, before we go ahead. I do admit that there's a new standing order. And I do admit that there's been a transition. I, I am not challenging the chief whip of the minority side, and I dare not challenge him. Because if I have issues, I will discuss it with him personally so that we resolve this matter. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, nobody is rushing for any referral to be made to a committee. I'm sure that, Mr. Speaker, you are competent enough to determine that based on the gravamen of the subject matter, you want one committee, two committees, or leadership of a certain committee to join another committee. And that has always been our practice. But to rise up and say that under no circumstances will you go to this committee, under no circumstances will you go to the other committee, I think it's premature. It's premature. So I would plead with the 
the, the, the minority chief with. If you want the new committees to be constituted, let's do that. It is in your court. If you consider new committees, wherever you take us, we will serve there and work for you. But such comments, I will play with him. You should hold it. Because as minds and energy ranking, when you refer to my committee and you make such a statement, it, it really hurts a little. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. My attention was drawn to referrals of some mineral agreements to joint committee on the lands and energy, lands and energy committees, joint committees. I have been looking at that referral and I've had discussions and because of the critical nature of the subject matter, I proposed and leadership accepted that we should rather refer it, those agreements, to the Lands and Natural Resources Committee with the additional directive that three, four members from the leadership of each side of the House should assist in the deliberation of the committee. Honorable members, these are critical agreements that will have to be scrutinized seriously. I will not participate in the debate, but I will be very vigilant because for some time now, I have long to the school of thought that belief that we have not benefited from the natural endowment that God has so much blessed this nation. And it's all because of the agreements that we enter into with these private sector investors. Please, this time around, we will not hesitate in rejecting in this agreement that we believe is not in the interest of the nation. The new composition of the committees, as we realize, have... And away from Parliament, the Abwazi Power Enclave, responsible for producing 730 megawatts of Ghana's electricity, along with several strategic state installations, is under threat of being consumed by the sea. The Ghana Hydrological Authority would issued a statement warning that the devastation could be catastrophic if immediate protective measures are not taken. Adobe Asari was at a news conference in our report. The Ghana Hydrological Authority says it has now become urgent for the country to protect the threatened institutions or lose them. So along our coastal stretch, we have different uh, or varying levels of vulnerability. We have varying levels of vulnerability. So at one end, we are losing as much as uh, 1.3 meter um, per, uh, per year. To the, to the coast. They include the St. Augustine's College, the University of Cape Coast, the Cape Coast Nursing and Midwifery College. Also under threat is the Accra, Cape Coast and Cape Coast Takrati stretch of the N1 Highway, all in the central region. The Akul is in, in Cape Coast and uh, we have uh, on the Cape Coast Takrati Road very, very much at risk. We have uh, uh, St. Augustine's College. If any of you went to St. Augustine's, I have to pray that we can do this work very quickly. Otherwise, in a couple of years' time, St. Augustine's will disappear from the surface of the earth. Um, <laughs> we have Cape Coast Central Hospital nearby as well. In the western region, the Abuazi Power Enclave, where the Takrati Power Plant and the Twin Energy Station are located, will all be affected. We have a Abuazi Enclave where the, uh, we have a power plant that is uh, at risk. You know, the, uh, again, the um, sea is very close to um, the, the power plant. In the greater Accra region, Dan Suman, 
Ningo Pram Pram, the Dinua Flower Highway, as well as some communities in the Volta region, all face the threat. So that is uh, Dansuman, and you will see, you know, these are recent photos um, showing uh, properties being lost. You know, uh, Dansuman particularly, the, the sea is very close to the road. Um, and if nothing is done shortly, we will lose the road um, to the sea, along with all the houses um, sitting next to the road. Some work is already underway to protect threatened communities, but the Hydrological Authority says the country will have to find 200 million U.S. dollars to build coastal defense systems to avert a possible destruction of these communities. Adobia Asari for Joy News, Accra. In a bid to promote sustainable farming practices and reduce the harmful use of industrial chemicals, the Center for Indigenous Knowledge and Organizational Development, SICOD, has trained peasant farmers in the Upper East region on how to produce organic weed killer using human urine. Albert Sori has more. The innovative approach utilizes readily available and natural resources such as human urine, salt, vinegar, and baking soda. These are measured in specific quantities and mixed into an acidic solution that kills weeds within hours after spraying. James Opuakbajo runs a youth development center which focuses on training young people in Techiman in the Bono East region to be innovative and see livelihood opportunities in agroecology. His center came up with the idea of making an organic weed killer using human urine. Urine is nothing that is harmful to us but at least we need to handle that with caution for instance get nose marks protect your hands with clothes and all those things and you're good to go with our system we do not kill the microorganisms in the soil overall we're not looking at just the the physical or the monetary cost we are looking at the benefits we get from the environment and then from the human health so for instance if i have to use hundred city to prepare my weed side or weed killer and that will save me cost going to the hospital. We feel it's better than spending 20 CD to buy the synthetic weed inside, kill the weeds, and at the end spending billions in the hospital treating yourself. The Center for Indigenous Knowledge and Organizational Development, SECOD, took an interest in Opuakbojo's innovation and partnered with him to train peasant farmers on how to make the solution and use it to kill weeds on their farms. The training was conducted with a specific emphasis on women farmers to equip them with the knowledge and skills. Wilberforce well, Lati is the Deputy Executive Director of SICOD. We are in some discussions with the University of Energy and Natural Resources in Sunyani to see how we can, you know, systematize this whole thing, try to bring the research component look at the efficacy, look at uh, issues around formulation and all that stuff. But basically, for the places that we have tried, it has had tremendous uh, impact and effect. The major concern here is, it is not exactly a pleasant activity for humans to be mixing substances with their own urine. Nonetheless, these farmers are willing to do it for the benefits and have hailed the method as a game changer in the promotion of natural farming methods. Well, I don't see it to be uncomfortable because the urine in the process, the smell will go out. Then you'll be comfortable using it. Spraying it, you don't use it on the plant. If you, the, the weeds are around the plant, you plant them on roofs. So you spray along, and the, those that are near or around the plant, you remove them, use your hand and remove them. Locally, we have been using the uh, urine for other purposes, which is not so uh, harmful. So it will help us in a long way in uh, reducing the cost of buying the weedicide and also the cost of buying insecticide in the markets, which is very, very expensive.
we've been training farmers on how to manage their soils well by preparing compost and applying manure, doing mixed cropping and all the other practices. But this training we've come to participate in is a game changer for me, especially the weed control in land preparation and in weeding or crop management as well. The use of human urine to produce a weed killer is also a cost-effective and environmentally friendly alternative to industrial chemicals which can pollute soil, water, and harm human health. As the Center for Indigenous Knowledge and Organizational Development expands this project with more research, it is expected to have a significant impact on the environment, public health, and the livelihoods of small-scale farmers in the Upper East region. For Joy News, Albert Sorry, Bolgatanga. And from Upper East, let me take you to the Ashanti region, where residents of Kumeu and Fomina are excited about the quality of infrastructure and health service delivery at two hospitals in the areas recently operationalized. The Setre Kumeu and Adansi North District Hospitals, which together provide 240 beds, opened to the public a few months ago after a 10-year wait. NMS Infrastructure Limited design built and equipped the British standard facilities for the two hospital projects. Ohim Interior of our health desk has been following the stalled hospital projects in the Ashanti region and has more in this report. Yeah. NMS Infrastructure Limited was awarded the contract on seven hospital projects, including Adansi North and Setriokumau District Hospitals. The district hospitals in Dodua, Sekendi Takradi, Garu and Abitifi complete the list. The Setrekumau District Hospital started operations on April 15, 2024, while the Adansi North District Hospital commenced operations on November 6, 2023. Fred Su is executive chairman of NMS Infrastructure Limited. So this is also not just a, a center for health, but a center of employment. And I think that's where one of its greatest values lies. And uh, what we in NMS are focusing on doing is delivering healthcare, education facilities, clean water, and uh, jobs in agriculture. Residents traveled long distances for referral services or to receive medical attention in ramshackle temporary facilities until recently. They say doing this endangered their lives. Ama Afrakoma. A resident of Formina in the Adansi North District is one of them. My husband returned from UK and insisted everyone visit and rest at this British Standard Hospital. According to him, the hospital compares to what they have abroad. Even before I saw the doctor, I was healed just by the sight of the hospital environment. The hospital environment is very neat and clean, possessing a spirit of healing. All I can say is that may God bless the contractors for this beautiful edifice. The chief linguist for Adanse Hini says the operationalization of the Adanse North District Hospital will stop needless deaths linked to referrals to the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital or Bekwai Hospital. According to him, the new Adanse Hospital is better built. Hospital the benefits from this new hospital are enormous. It goes beyond Adansiman. We used to patronize a clinic in the absence of the hospital. We are then referred to Benito and then to either Bakwai or Konfanoche Hospital. Patients many a time die on their way during such referrals. Those of us coming from Tebaso, Bajisango, Abu Samso are happy this new hospital has been opened in Fomina. I think the Fomina Hospital looks better than the Konfanoche Hospital in terms of design. For a moment, one may assume you've entered an airport, but it is a hospital. The Adansi North District Hospital has since seen 2,100 hospital admissions, 470 deliveries, including 150 caesarean sections, 
and 228 minor and major procedures. Dr. Abena Yosin is the medical superintendent. We've done about 2,100 hospital admissions since inception, a total of about 470 deliveries. And um, out of that, about 350 were vaginal deliveries. We've done cesarean section of about, almost about 150. We've also done other surgeries in total, other major surgeries in total, 209 minor surgeries. Essential Kumo District Hospital, on the other hand, 370 outpatient department patients per day and has already documented 100 major procedures, all of which were referrals from surrounding hospitals. From Puma, a 38 year old mother of seven and a regular client of the Old Kumo Polyclinic delivered her seventh child at the newly constructed Central Kumo District Hospital. She was cuddling her newly delivered male child here at the time of her visit. I am a client of the old Kumewu Polyclinic. Four of my children were delivered there until recently when they opened this new hospital. I just delivered at the new facility. Nurses and everybody here acted professionally. It is safer to deliver here than the old hospital which lacked space. This place is very neat. Her account is supported by the mother of three, Dora Ajay, who thinks the neatly built hospital could compare many women to give birth. This hospital looks nice. The more emphasis you place on this morning facility, the more tempted one will give birth here. The health minister, Dr. Bernard Okoboy, has commended NMS Infrastructure Limited for the provision of quality infrastructure. It was a design, construction, equipping that came with its funding. It has all the ingredients of a fit-for-purpose primary healthcare facility, which means that Almost everything that must be done when it comes to the basic things in health can be handled here. Medical superintendent of Sechokmao District Hospital speaks highly of the link between quality infrastructure and healthcare delivery. What we have here is a 120 bed capacity hospital. You know, uh, we were in a polyclinic where we have. Uh, roughly 40 beds, but even that, the beds were so close that uh, it was so uncomfortable for patients and staff. Uh, staff are now more comfortable, the uh, space, uh, talk about privacy for the patients, all those things have improved significantly. And uh, you look at the environment, both external and internal environment, I think it's something that uh, uh, people talk about a lot. This is, uh, I mean, a great work that has been done here. Meanwhile, authorities at the Sechiri Kumau District Hospital have scheduled the month of July for free surgical care for clients. For Joy News, Ohim Interior reporting. And meanwhile, President Ekufado is expected to commission the two facilities later today. And up next is Business Update with Sweetie Abochi. Over to you. Well, thank you, Denisia, for bringing us the nitty-gritty of the AM News. Let's do some business stories now. The minority in Parliament say Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia must live up to his responsibility as head of the economic management team and stop the skyrocketing prices of fuel. Prices of petrol is now over 15 Ghana CDs after the latest pricing window. Minority spokesperson on Mines and Energy, John Junapo, says instead of calling for debates, the vice president must ensure that the CD is stabilized and fuel prices are reduced. Today, as you may be aware, the price of a liter of fuel is higher than it used to be for a gallon of fuel. During our time, the gallon of fuel was about 14 CD. Today, a liter is about 15 point something CD. The goal for oil program, our checks indicate that it's causing serious financial loss to the state. As if that is not enough, the exchange rate is depreciating. As if that is also not enough, 
fuel prices keep going up. Last week it went up, this week it's gone up. This will certainly impact inflation, it will impact productivity, and it will make the cost of living high. And it's all because of the exchange rate. And so clearly, government has lost it. Government is unable to handle the exchange rate. And I think that the managers of the economy ought to sit up and do what is right and proper. While the Bank of Ghana is spending millions of CDs and dollars on the gold for oil program, the currency is not stabilizing. The city is depreciating, poor prices are going up, cost of living is going up, and everybody is suffering. But worst of all, wages and salaries are stagnating. Wages and salaries are not going up. And so, hitherto, under President Mahama, whilst you could buy two bags of rice with your minimum wage, today you cannot even buy one bag of rice with your minimum wage. The managers of the economy have lost it. And I think that Dr. Baumia, instead of calling for a debate, he should rather spend some time to concentrate on managing the economy because the cost of living is going through the roof. We cannot continue like that. And what's happening in the currency markets? Take a look. And that's it for business updates. Back to Denisia Pomeje. Denisia, who's coming for News Review? Oh, Dr. Kwame Asasante is joining us for News Review. He's political scientist and director, Center for European Studies at the University of Ghana, Legon. Well, that's it for AM News. My name is Denisia Pomeje, and as I always say, enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs>